Welcome everybody, I'm Dave with Family RV. Today we're gonna to be doing a basic walkthrough on an MB24 Thor Quantum on our Mercedes chassis. So without further ado, let's get started on how to hook this guy up. All right, one of the first things we're gonna to wanna to do after we've gotten to your campsite, we're gonna to wanna to hook up your electrical, sewer, and water. If you have full hookups, that means you have electrical, sewer, and water. To hook up your shore power, power cord, it's gonna be located on the driver's side towards the rear. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna say Furon right here. We're gonna actually lift this guy up. We're gonna take this end of the cord and we're gonna actually put it in there. And then we're gonna twist this guy on right there to secure it. And then we're gonna take this end over here. This is a 30 amp coach. This is what a 30 amp looks like. We're gonna plug it into your campsite and we're gonna make sure that the breakers are on at your campsite and that's gonna give you power. Uh, how you'll know you're getting power go inside take a look at the microwave if the microwave is on you are getting power Next we're going to hook up our city water connection, which is also located on the driver's side towards the rear labeled city water connection So we're going to take that guy off right there. We're going to take this end of your water hose and We're going to twist it on Nice and tight To the coach then we're gonna take this end, which has a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator regulates the water pressure going inside the coach. Too much pressure can damage the pipes. So let's be careful with that. Make sure the water uh, regulator is always on here. We're just gonna take this guy. We're gonna put it on the spigot at your campsite. We'll turn on the water. But before we turn on the water, we wanna make sure all the faucets inside the coach are turned off. Once we verify they're all turned off, we can go ahead and turn this guy on. And this is gonna be your water supply while you're at your campsite. Next, we are going to hook up our sewer hose. Our sewer exit is gonna be located on the driver's side towards the rear, underneath the coach by the exhaust right here. We're gonna see some labels right here, sewer outlet connection and wastewater holding tanks. So if we take a look, let's see if we can get down over here. It's pretty tight up here. We're gonna remove your sewer cap that's under here. We're gonna remove that guy. We're gonna take this end of the sewer hose and we're gonna make sure that it is locked in right here. That's locked in right there. We have a gray valve and we have a black valve. Our black valve is right here and our gray valve is over here. We're gonna make sure these guys are still remaining closed even if we have our sewer hose connected. We're gonna take our sewer hose, we're gonna put it in the hole at the campsite and leave these guys closed until our tanks reach about two thirds or full. Once our tanks reach two thirds or full, then we're gonna come out here, we're gonna pull our black valve, let the, the waste drain out. Once the black waste drains out, we're gonna pull our gray valve and the gray valve is gonna help flush out that hose. Now keep in mind, after you dump, your sensors inside the control panel still may read one third or two thirds. The reason why they do that is their sensors inside these tanks and sometimes debris get um, stuck on the sensors and it acts as if the tanks are still full. That is not the case if you verified that the water in the waste came out. To clean out your black tank, we're gonna use a separate hose and we're gonna use what's called a Santee flush. This is the uh, inlet for a Santee flush. What that does is that pushes water uh, inside your black tank and rinses it out. Now, if you hook up the Santee flush, you're gonna wanna make sure your black valve is open and verify water is coming out. Once you verify water is coming out, you could actually close that black valve for a few minutes and fill up the black tank. Once it gets to about one third or two thirds, go ahead and pull the black valve again and the water will drain it out right there. And that helps rinse out that guy right there, okay? Now that we've hooked up our electrical, our sewer, and our water at our campsite, if we, if we have all three, your campsite may not have all three, we're gonna actually start setting up the coach. We're gonna put down the stabilizers first, and then we're gonna push out the slide. Right, now that we've hooked up our electrical, our sewer, and our water, we're gonna start setting this guy up and this thing is equipped with two stabilizing jacks. Let's take a look at those stabilizing jacks. They're gonna be located at the rear of the coach underneath here. In order to put those jacks down, there are two buttons by the entry door that we're gonna actually go and push. Now these jacks, stabilizing jacks should be put down before the slide comes out, so let's go do that. 
All right, so the two stabilizing jacks are located by the entry door inside the coach. Passenger side, driver side. We're gonna go ahead and push them down at the same time, two buttons, and we're gonna listen for the jacks to touch. Now these are only stabilizing jacks. They shouldn't be too tight when you put them down. So we're gonna listen for the sound and let's see how they work. All right, once the stabilizing jacks both touch, we're gonna do them individually and we wanna listen for the winding sound. I'm gonna show you how far these guys should go down. That's it. And we're gonna do the next one. And that's all it should go down to. Now, when we push the slide out, this passenger side stabilizing jack may go up just a little bit. We're gonna push the slide out and then we're gonna push it down all the way. All right, now that we put down the stabilizing jacks, we're gonna push out the slide. In order to push the slide out, we're gonna need to pull up this parking brake right here on the, by the driver's seat. We're gonna, just gonna give it a couple of clicks, not too tight. And then we're gonna turn the vehicle on. This vehicle does have a push start right here with the key fob right here. So we're just gonna make sure it's close by, pushing the brake. Now that beeping noise is a continuous beep. That beeping noise lets you know that the jacks are down. Do not move the vehicle, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just push out the slide while those jacks are down real quick. We're gonna come over here to the control panel. We're gonna hit slide extend. And we're gonna hold the slide ex extend button down until the slide stops. Make sure nobody is sitting on the slide while you're pushing it out. All right, next we're gonna turn the vehicle off now that we push the slide out. There we go. We're actually gonna open up the driver's side door so the radio and everything goes off. All right, so for the MB24, this is the control panel by the entry door. You got a lot of buttons right here. We're gonna go through all these buttons right now. All right, if you are not hooked up to shore power, there is an onboard generator. So if you're, if you're dry camping, you're gonna use the generator for your TV, air conditioner, microwave, or any outlets. Those four things will not work unless you're plugged in or unless the generator's on. Your, your generator actually on this coach runs off of propane, not diesel fuel. So this is a propane operated generator okay so keep that in mind the longer you have that generator on it will consume your propane to turn the generator on we're going to hold the stop button to prime it once this red light goes on that means the generator's primed we're going to release it and then we're going to hold the start button down until the generator fully starts there we go the generator has started now, once the microwave beeps, then you know the load is on the generator and you can use the microwave, the TV, the air conditioning, or any outlet, those four things. If you are hooked up to shore power, you'll never need the generator on at all. The generator's only for dry camping. It's gonna take a minute for the microwave to beep. Once it beeps, then we know we're good. We'll shut it off. To turn the generator off, we're simply just gonna push the start button and that's gonna go ahead and turn the generator off. These are our tank levels, liquid propane gallons, battery, fresh water, black tank, gray tank. To test the levels, to see where your levels of each tank is, you're just gonna simply push that button right there. It's gonna light up and it's gonna tell you how much is in each tank. So for example, this liquid propane is full because it reaches uh, empty, one third, two thirds full. Our battery is also full. Our fresh water is at one third. Our black tank, which is our toilet, is empty. And our gray tank, which is our shower and sink, is also empty. When your black tank reaches two thirds, that's when you wanna go ahead and pull that black valve outside by your sewer hose and uh, empty that out also with your gray. Anytime you dump the black, you're gonna always wanna dump the gray. They kinda go hand in hand. Uh, other buttons on here, this is a step on and off. The entry door steps go in and out as you close the screen door. When you're stationary at your campsite, 
go ahead and turn the step off and that will allow the steps, the entry steps to stay out and not retract back and forth if anybody's going in and out. This is a ceiling light right here. We just talked about your slide extend. That's that right there. This is your water pump. Your water pump will be used if you are not hooked up to city water. If you're on the road, you need to pull over, you want to freshen up, take a shower, you need to use the toilet or use the sink water for anything, this is going to be your water pump. This is going to pump your water out of your fresh water tank. I'm going to show you where that fresh water tank fill is in a little bit once we start going uh, through everything outside. Uh, just note this is your water pump. This does not need to be on. It needs to be off if you are hooked up to city water for that, okay? Tank heaters, black and gray. What these things do is they heat up the black and gray tanks if you're in freezing cold weather, a little bit cold weather than usual. You can turn these guys on. It's got like a little heating pad on the uh, black and gray tanks that helps keep those tanks warm and helps them from not freezing over. We're gonna go ahead and turn those off for now. All right, let's go take a tour on the inside of this coach. All right, we're gonna start from the front of the coach and work our way to the back. We're gonna start with our privacy curtain that's gonna cover up this windshield. You're gonna have a privacy curtain that comes with the coach right here. It does have one strip of Velcro on the curtain like this. So there's two Velcro straps right here, the Velcro on the curtain, and there's two Velcro tabs right there. On this coach, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tack these guys right here. We're gonna run this curtain underneath the visors, push the visors up right here. Also right here on this visor, we're gonna push it, tuck it under the visor, and then we're gonna connect it right here to this Velcro on this passenger side right there. All right, the top bunk up here, we're gonna pull this guy forward. We're gonna set this guy down like so. And you'll notice it's got a net right here. You wanna store some stuff up there, light stuff, nothing heavy. You're gonna connect this into the seat belt locks right there. The other one's gonna go right here. And then we have a vent up there, but we are gonna use the ladder. So let's take a look at the ladder. We're gonna unbuckle the ladder right here. And we're simply just gonna telescope it out like that. We're gonna connect this to the top bunk right there. And we're gonna show you how to open up this top vent right here. This top vent right here has got a little black knob. We're just gonna go ahead and twist that open right there. Make sure that this vent is closed while you are transporting. It can catch the wind and it can break. Make sure it's closed if it is raining. We got two air conditioning vents right here. Another one right there. We got two light switches that are just push button up here. We're gonna go ahead and push that guy right there. And then we also got a window shade right there. I'm gonna show you how to open up that window shade. That window shade button is gonna be right here above in the front cab, above the, um, between the driver and passenger seat. And that's gonna lift up that shade right there so you, whoever's up here sleeping can get a nice morning view or whatnot. Storage space is under here, so store any kind of books or any kind of toys for the kids or whatnot. We also have a privacy curtain for whoever is sleeping up here. We can just pull this guy right here and there's also a privacy curtain on that side that will give us more privacy for whoever's up there. Uh, we've got some USB ports right here. These USB ports run off of the house batteries. You do not need to be plugged into shore power and you do not need the generator on. These will just plug into your devices right there. We've got some storage space up here above the Dream Dinette. We've got storage, storage, and storage. We also have some lights under here that are also push button right here. And we also got another light switch right there to really light up the place. Uh, we have this emergency exit right here, the red one with the red tab, but you could also open this up if you are stationary or open up the uh, screen right there. We do have some blinds. These are slow rising blinds. We're gonna pull this guy down to lock it in like that. And then to unlock it, they rise up like that. Pretty easy, right? We got a wireless charger right here that works on some phones. Not all phones are compatible. There's also a USB port in this MB24 model right here that allows you to plug in your phone and stuff like that. Let's turn this uh, dinette into a bed real quick. We're gonna remove the uh, cushionings and then we're gonna drop the top and we'll put the cushions on and we're gonna see what it looks like uh, as a bed. All right, we're gonna simply remove these cushions. We're gonna set them up right there real quick. We're gonna remove this backing right here. Set that up right there. Go ahead and remove this one. We'll set it right next to the ladder. And then the last but not least, we'll remove this cushion 
and then we're going to make sure that the seat belts are not in the view of where we're going to drop this table down. Take a look under here for me. You're going to notice that there is a bar right here. So this table is locked in right now. To unlock the table to push it down, we're going to simply push that like that. We're going to take both hands and push in the middle and drop the table like so. Once the table is dropped down, we're going to grab the cushions again. We're going to center it. Probably the bigger ones are better in the middle. We'll go ahead and put this guy down right here. We'll take the other cushions and we'll fill in the space. One is going to be a little bit off if you notice like that. You can put some pillows and stuff and that's what the Dream Dinette will look like. Let's break it down real quick just to show you how to put it back together. We'll remove the cushions again. We'll just set these guys up right here. We're going to grab the table like this and pull it up with both hands like so all the way up. We're going to take this bar right here. We're going to lock it in right there and it's locked in and then we'll put our cushions back in. Like so. Flip this guy around. Go ahead and fix the seat belts a little bit later. And we're back to dinette. All right, let's take a look over here, what we have over here. We got some storage space up here, some cabinets. We got three buttons above the sink. Now they're not labeled, so let's go through them. The first one is gonna be for accent lighting right here. Turn that off and on. The middle one's gonna be for the lights on the cabinet. Plenty of cabinet uh, um, counter space right here. Uh, the third one is going to be for the exhaust fan if you are cooking. Uh, we'll just turn, open up this guy right here and your exhaust for your cooking and stuff can go in. Uh, always open up this window if you are still cooking in here. You'll notice there's a nice big window right by the stove that can get a lot of ventilation if you are cooking. Go ahead and open up that guy too. Here is your kitchen sink right here. We'll remove these guys right here. If you're on the road and you need to pull over and take a break, do some uh, dishes or whatever, cooking, uh, you're not hooked up to your city water, go ahead and turn the water pump on and that will allow you to have water while you are pulled over taking a break. We'll put these guys back on right here. Also on the kitchen counter seat, we have some outlets. We're gonna go ahead and push this guy down like that. We're gonna lift it up and we got some power outlets here as well as some USBs. To drop this guy back down, we're gonna see this red tab right here. We're gonna push that guy, we're gonna drop it back down and we're gonna lock it in right there. Uh, right below, got some more slow rising curtains right here. For more privacy, we got some storage for some sponges. We got a storage for a garbage can down here or whatever you need. We got some drawers right here. Nice kitchen doors. We do have the microwave that is below the cooktop. This does not have an oven. It is a convectional oven, so it does have that option right there if you want to bake anything and do stuff like that. This is the stove top right here. We'll notice right here you have a little switch. That's just for some effects right there to have these lights on. We also have three burners, one, two, three, and the igniter. Never ever turn the flames on with this glass top down. We're gonna always lift it up right here and it acts as a backsplash right here. To turn the, um, the burners on, we're gonna start with this one right here. We're gonna turn, match up the arrow to the flame. We're gonna go to the igniter and follow the arrows and there goes our flame. Let's do all three of them. There we go, see how easy that is right there. Light them right up. Now make sure we turn them everything off. If you're not using them, make sure that you let this cool down before you put the glass top down because it can shatter the glass. Uh, when you are transporting and this is cooled down, we will always want to make sure that this is actually closed. And this is very a lot of big counter space right here. You could always put a towel right here and have more counter space if you're not using the stove top. All right, let's talk about some stuff right here. We have a privacy curtain because this is a Murphy bed. This Murphy bed acts as a couch and the bed is behind here. So we're gonna go through on how to do that. Privacy curtain, you just unvelcro that. There we go, the light switch is over here. Privacy for the room, pretty much for uh, whatever you need privacy. Let's put this thing back on real quick. Connect it right there. We're gonna take these pillows off of the couch. We're gonna set them right over here on the dinette like so and then we're going to turn this into a bed all right we're going to turn this 
Murphy bed into a bed. We're gonna re remove the cushions already. Now we're gonna unhook this wall right over here, like so. Before we do that, there is some storage space where you can store stuff underneath this if you needed to, before we pull the bed down. We're gonna lift up this bar right here. We're gonna gently pull this guy down. Like so. And then we will actually pull the mattress down, which is pretty cool. And you got a nice big bed right here. We could throw the pillow tops back on there, or you could put the couch cushions back on there somehow. Let's push this thing back up. We're gonna can actually just push the whole thing up. We are going to push the bar back down. And we're gonna get the strap again and we're gonna hook up the strap. We're gonna pull it nice and tight until it hooks on right there. And then we can put the cushions right back on for the couch if needed. Right next to this bed right here, we're gonna notice you do have some USB ports, a 12 volt a plug-in and some um, outlets right there. Behind this guy right here, we do have some windows, and this is the light switch for the lights behind there. Let's talk about this fridge right here, and it also has a freezer, nice big freezer, nice big fridge. This refrigerator does run off the house batteries. It does not run off of propane. It runs off the power, uh, inverter, power uh, inverter and the uh, battery. This guy should it's going to be on. We're going to go ahead and turn this on. All right, it's on. This is the temperature for the freezer and for the fridge. If it's white right here, this little square, that is for the freezer. And we can turn it to whatever temperature we need it at. This one right here is for the fridge. And we can turn that to whatever temperature we need it at. And this is just the night uh, light right there for the thing. All right, we're gonna turn this off real quick. That's your fridge. All right. Some more storage space up here. And here we have some plenty of space in here for a cabinetry, clothes, or whatever. But we also have a, a tabletop. Now, this tabletop is going to go right over here. So let's backtrack to the front. I'm going to set this ladder aside real quick. We're gonna, how we're going to put this table, because these are captain's chairs. We'll get to that a little bit later on how to uh, swivel those around. This guy will go right here. Twist it. And then we're going to lock it into position. Like so. And then we will put the table, small little tabletop on top like so in the hole right there. Okay? We're going to remove this actually. To remove it. We're gonna reverse everything, twist that off, twist that off, and it's off. Let's go put these back in the closet. Here um, below these drawers, right before the bathroom, you're gonna push this little guy right here. This is where all your breakers and all your fuses are at. Everything is labeled accordingly and tells you what every switch is for. If a, if a fuse goes out, you would just look right here and replace it, or check your breakers if any of your breakers GFI or anything's not working where this is the first place we're going to want to look all right over here before we go into the restroom here is our dometic furnace and air conditioning controls we are going to lightly tap the mode it's going to turn blue it's going to still say off we're going to lightly tap it again we're going to leave this on auto if it's on high or if it's on low that means it's only the fan is running. Does not mean that anything else is running but the fan. So we're always gonna keep this guy on auto when we're going to the furnace. Here's your air conditioning. So we're gonna, we're gonna wait for this guy to turn on. Let's go a little bit lower. See how I'm lightly just tapping these guys and moving them? And then that air conditioner will go on. Let's see if it, I think it's already on. There's the AC right there. We're gonna open this guy up right here, this little vent right here. If this is open, the air is coming out of here. If you close it, it's gonna come out of the air ducts on the roof. What I like to do is I like to leave this guy open if it's really hot. I'm gonna leave this guy open, let that air circulate in here really, really fast. 
Once it gets nice and cold in here, I'm gonna shut that and I'm gonna open up all these and it's gonna keep it at that right temperature. For your furnace, you're simply gonna keep tapping the mode button lightly and it's gonna go to furnace. Now the AC will turn off in just a few minutes uh, and then that furnace will go on and you can adjust the temperature lightly right here for the furnace. When this is not in use, we're gonna always make sure it's turned off. Once it goes off, give it a couple minutes, everything will shut off. There we go, starting to shut down. Let's come over here to the bathroom. We're gonna got, we've got a couple light switches right here. We've got some couple switches. One is for the vent fan and one is the light. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn this fan off. For your bathroom uh, door, you're gonna follow the arrows. Use your finger, push this guy down to go across and close the door. Go back in like that. Okay, come on inside. Let's take a look at this bathroom. In the bathroom, we have a nice, big, large storage uh, closet right here with you can hang clothes. This is where your ladder will get stored. We also have a broom in here and then some drawers right here. And then we also have another medicine cabinet right here to store um, some bathroom stuff right there. Here, this is your water heater control. I'm gonna turn this guy off real quick. All right, this is for your hot water. This is a, a, a tankless water heater. Uh, to, op to operate it, you're gonna go ahead and turn this on. We never wanna set it at 124. That's the highest it can go. We actually probably wanna set it at, let's keep it at 115. Uh, then you could always control the temperature for your hot water at your uh, water faucet, nozzles to hot or cold. Uh, this is just Celsius or Fahrenheit, this button right there. And then this is right here, uh, like I said, to adjust the temperature right here, we'll keep it at 115. This is a tankless water heater. It should probably only take, I always give it about 10 to 15 minutes. You get nice hot water right there. Whenever you are not using this, always turn it off. Always keep everything off if it's not in use. Right over here by the toilet, we have a outlet right here with also a GFI breaker right here. Any curling iron, blow dryers, or any kind of high powered appliances like that, it can pop the GFI. You always want to reset it right there. If that doesn't reset, check your breakers down there in the breaker control panel. Always double check that. In the shower over here, we got a regular shower with a water saver button right here. This is kind of uh, to help you save the hot water. You turn it off to your temperature that you want it on. If you turn the water, water comes out. You turn the water off, you kind of lather up, rinse off, and that's gonna make sure everybody gets a nice hot shower. And it's also gonna prevent your tanks from filling up so fast. And then we just close that door nice like that, and you're good to go. All right, next we're gonna talk about this TV and how to operate it and surf it on the regular over the air channels and how to program it and search the channels if you have cable at your campsite, which some campsites do. All right, so first we're gonna Turn the TV on. All right, it's gonna go on. Now we're gonna surf the channels on regular over the air. And to do that, we're gonna to go to the remote. We're gonna make sure that the source is on TV. We're gonna hit enter. Then we're gonna to go to menu and we're gonna pull up this screen right here. And we're gonna use the arrows to scroll over to channel. Once we get to channel, we're gonna use the arrows to scroll down to air and cable. So we're doing over the air right now, so we're gonna leave it on air. Then we're gonna scroll with the arrows down to auto scan. We're gonna hit enter, and we're gonna put start to scan, and it's gonna uh, find as many channels as we can right now. And we're not gonna find any channels in here right now because we're in a shop, and we're not gonna get good reception in here. But let's go over on how to surf the channels if you have a cable connection at your campsite. So we're gonna go back to source. Let's actually exit out of here. We're gonna push exit. We're gonna make sure we're already on source. We're gonna make double check. We're on TV. And you'll notice right here, there's a different HDMI. If you have other devices you wanna hook up. Uh, so we were on TV. We're gonna go back to menu. We're gonna use the arrows to scroll back to channel. And then we're gonna scroll down to air and cable. We're gonna use the arrow to switch over to cable like so okay now that we're on cable what we're going to actually do on this coach is we're going to open this little latch right here and we're going to open up the tv to reveal a hidden compartment in here now we have wiring right here 
Now, I don't know if we can see this, but there's a green light on right there. See that green light? If you are gonna use cable from a campsite and search the channels on cable, that green light needs to be off. Let's see if we can get a better picture of that green light. There we go. There's that green light right there. So to turn that green light off, there is a button right here. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off. The green light is off. Now we can search the channels on cable on the TV. Once the green light is off, we're gonna, remember we put it on cable. We're gonna go down to auto scan and we're gonna start the scan and it's gonna start searching if you are connected to a cable at your campsite. Now let's go outside and I'm gonna show you where that cable connection should be hooked up to. So if you're searching your channels on cable, right above your shore power plugin is your coax cable connection. You'll have to get a coax cable, connect it right here and then connect it to your campsite and pick up whatever stations you need there. All right, we're gonna go over the buttons right here and this uh, countertop right here to get some excess, uh, some more counter sp space. You're gonna lift this up right here. It's gonna lock in. To lower it down, you're gonna actually push the counter up, push this in, push this guy in, and it's gonna go right down. Over here, we have some electrical outlets. Right here is your battery disconnect. Now this guy should only be off if we are storing the RV. Uh, otherwise, if you're traveling on the road, if you're hooked up to shore power and whatnot, this guy should be on. Once you turn this off, you get zero power to the coach whatsoever. These are the passenger uh, and driver's side jacks that we talked about. Down here, we have a awning light switch right here. And right here, we have a step light right here. And right here is also another step light underneath the coach. And this is our awning button, which we're gonna push out right now. And this is our solar control panel right here. Down here, you're gonna notice this is an automatic generator start. If you are dry camping, you can enable that. And once the battery starts going to a certain level, the generator will automatically turn on. Let's talk about the awning real quick. We're gonna push it out and we're gonna tell you where to stop. We're gonna wait for that flap to come down. Once a flap comes down, that's as far as we want the awning to come out. Always remember this awning is not windproof and I like to also say that it's not rainproof. Too much heavy rain on this guy can collapse it and can damage it, so be very careful. Always have it in if you're not attending it. Only have it out when you are with the coach itself. There's that flap, it came back down. There we go. That's the awning fully extended. Now, if you do need to pull down this, you could arm right here. This is an adjustable pitch. We could pull that down right there. You could also come to this side and also pull it down and give it that little pitch that it needs for the shape. Uh, it's always good practice that when you're pulling in the awning, always make sure to push that guy back up. Also do the other arm, push this guy back up before pulling it in. Now, when you pull the awning in, you're gonna always wanna make sure that the flap is coming towards you, coming towards the coach. This is the proper way to roll in the awning. So let's always make sure it comes in this way. And that's all the way closed right there. Let's talk about the steps real quick. This is the, on the control panel. There's a step on and off. So let's turn the steps on right here. This is a step on and off button. You'll notice every time you close the screen door, these steps are gonna go up and down. Now, if you turn the steps off up here on the control panel, that will allow the steps to stay down while you're at your campsite. If you forget to turn the step back on, once you start the vehicle, the step should automatically go up, but always double check to see if they go up. We got, okay, the entry door, we got two locks. One's a deadbolt and one's the other lock, okay? We're gonna close this guy up right here. We, we have three keys and a key fob right here. Uh, the purple key is gonna be for the two locks, same key for both locks at the entry. We're gonna gently do it like that. If the deadbolt does not lock, push 
the door in and give it some help. Do not force the key because these are keys are very fragile and they can break. This next key right here is the gray square key. This is gonna be the key to every single compartment door that has a lock on the exterior. Here's some storage down here. And then we're gonna use the gray key. We're gonna push that in nice and easy. We're gonna push this in and we're gonna help it lock. That way this key is, it doesn't get worn out or break. Let's go through this whole outside exterior of the coach. We're gonna show you what everything is. This right here is to help you hold the door open. So you don't have to hold that door open if you're getting your uh, luggage or other stuff, camping gear and stuff out. Uh, right here on the passenger side, you're gonna see this black little cap right here. This is your fresh water fill. This is where you will fill up your fresh water all you're gonna do is stick a hose right there. It's gonna just hang in there right there. Turn the water on and it's gonna start filling up your fresh water tank. Though to use this water out of your fresh water tank, remember you have to have the water pump on. If you're hooked up to city water, you do not need your water pump on. This is only for dry camping or if you're on the road and need some water. On the other pass, on the, on the same passenger side, we got some outlets right here if you need to plug something in. Right here we have a uh, furnace exhaust. This gets very hot, make sure no adults or children touch this. So this is our generator. This is not storage right here. Uh, let's say you're dry camping and your generator's on but your microwave and your air conditioning never went on. You might have tripped a breaker that's inside this generator. Make sure you check your breakers inside. But if your generator's running and the microwave never beeped, it's a possibility that the breaker inside here tripped. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna open this up, take this off, and you're gonna notice this little switch, this little switch right here. This little switch right here is a breaker. If that breaker is pointed away from you, that means it's tripped. This breaker should always be towards you. That's in, that's in case your generator's running but nothing ever went on. That's that breaker you want to check also right there. Let's close this up right here. We'll lock that right there. This is a quick connect to connect to your propane. If you had an external barbecue pit and you don't want to carry another extra propane tank and your propane on the coach is filled up, you could actually tap into your propane right here, put a quick connect right there, turn the valve on, and you're good to go. Close that up right there. Here is a little bit more storage space right here for whatever you need. In here, there's also some storage space with a light switch right here. You can store some stuff in there. And right above this storage on the passenger side in the rear, we have the tankless water heater access door for service right here. That's the water heater that we access to service it. Close that up. And we have an outdoor shower right here. If you are at the beach or whatnot and you don't wanna get sand in the coach, you could always rinse off out here. We're gonna use this little silver key right here to access that door. It's got hot and cold, as well as a shower head right here to rinse off. You can rinse off pets or whatnot right there, whatever you wanna use it for. And we'll lock this guy back up. And then we got some more storage space right here. Slide out. This is the exhaust for the vehicle and the exhaust for the uh, generator. Over here on the slide out, we have some more storage right here. Plenty of storage space on this side right here. We'll close this guy up. And then underneath, the, underneath here, we're gonna take a look. That's some more storage space right there. And down over here, the compartment door with no lock on it is actually your propane fill tank where we would fill our propane. And there's no locks on this propane in case of an emergency. If something happens to the coach, your neighbor at your campsite or somebody needs to come over here and access this to turn the propane off. Clockwise all the way turns the propane off. Counterclockwise always turns the propane on. If you do go get your coach filled up with propane, make sure whoever filled it up, a certified uh, propane technician will have to fill it up. Always make sure that they turn this valve back on for your propane. Let's keep it moving. 
And this is just a little storage compartment right here for an external uh, a sewer hose that we really don't use. It's, it's pretty small. We use another container back there for our sewer hose. This is a diesel powered vehicle. It takes diesel, not gasoline. This is where your um, diesel full uh, cap, the cap is located by the driver door. It plainly says diesel right there, it's in red. Um, so make sure it's you put diesel only in this vehicle. Um, let's take a look. Because this is a diesel powered engine, this vehicle also takes diesel exhaust fluid. It's underneath the hood. You may have to fill it up. You may not, depending how far you're going. But we're gonna show you anyways. To open up the hood, your latch is right there. And we're gonna go over to the front and open up the hood. Underneath here, you're gonna find the hood latch. We're gonna hold this up. And then the latch right here to hold it in place goes there. And take a look over here. The blue cap is diesel exhaust fluid. This is an additive for diesel powered engines. Uh, this is, uh, you'll have to get this at a gas station or, uh, some kind of auto store. If you are empty, you get a funnel right here and you just pour it in slowly. Make sure it doesn't splash everywhere because it is a corrosive and it will get all over the place. Diesel exhaust fluid. It's called DEF. Diesel exhaust fluid. Let's close this thing back up. And we're going to shut it right there. We're going to break down the coach now. We are going to take off the curtain, we're going to put up the ladder, we're going to pull the slide in, and we are going to put up the jacks, and then we're going to review the front cab of this thing. All right, to put the ladder back down, there's two buttons right here on the ladder, one on the right, one on the left. We're going to push these things together, the ladder's going to go down, we're going to push the next button, the ladder's going to go down, and we're going to push the next one, the ladder's going to go down. We're going to hook it up right here strap it back in and then we're going to store it in the back storage compartment in the bathroom where this thing belongs there are two hooks in here just hook your ladder in right there and that's the perfect storage spot for that next we can go ahead and remove our overcap curtain like so fold it up nice and neat and we're going to store it in one of the compartments can go ahead and lift this guy up give us more head space now we are going to pull in the slide and then push up the jacks remember when you're setting up the jacks go down first then the slide and now when we're breaking it down the slide comes in first and the jacks then the jacks go up well we're going to always make sure this front seat is clear from the slide we never want to push this thing back too far. When we're pulling in the slide, it can damage this seat right here. To pull in the slide, the vehicle needs to be turned on with the parking brake up. So let's turn the vehicle on. Remember the beeping noise means that the jacks are still down not to move. We're gonna come over here to the control panel real quick. We're gonna hit retract. And we're gonna hold this button down until the wall stops by itself. Make sure that the Murphy bed is up in position. Make sure nobody is sitting on the slide while you're bringing it in. And make sure no objects are in the, on the floor in the way. Once the slide stops, it is closed. We're gonna come over here to the entry door. We're gonna use both fingers and we're gonna push up both the jacks at the same time. Now, once the jacks go fully up, you're going to notice that the sound is going to go off. That means the jacks are up, but we're also always going to go double check those jacks to make sure they did go up all the way. There we go. Double tap those guys. We're good. We're going to turn the vehicle off. All right, we're going to go over some stuff in the cabin, how to operate this vehicle right here. But first, we're going to take a look on how these seats swivel. Now you're gonna notice right here that the parking brake is up. However, you need the parking brake up, remember for the slides to go out. You can just actually just push this down like so without pushing the button and that's gonna allow the seat to swivel. We're gonna swivel the seats. 
But we gotta make sure that this guy is pulled forward and we gotta make sure that this front seat is forward also. To adjust the backing of this chair, there is a little adjustment dial right here that allows this backing to go forward or backwards. Now underneath the seat, there are a couple, a couple of things right here. This one is to pull the seat forward and this one right here is to swivel the seat like so. So let's backtrack real quick. There is two ones right here. This one right here is to swivel the seat. And this one right here is to pull the seat forward and backwards. And then you got some other adjustments for sitting right here. If you wanna adjust these things right here, you can do so up or down. All right, let's start, uh, let's take a look at how to operate this vehicle and how to put it in drive and everything else. Okay, we are in the driver's seat of the vehicle and on the driver door, as always, like every other vehicle, you have your window controls right here and you also have your mirror controls right here. So let's go ahead and start the vehicle. This is the key fob because we've got to make sure that this is close by the button. All right. In order to operate your uh, mirrors to adjust them, you'll go ahead and push that and that's the driver's side mirror. It will adjust only the mirror, not your blind spotters. If you need to adjust your passenger side, you're gonna click the, uh, the right one and adjust your mirrors with this right here. Right below, right here, on the driver's side, we have your lights and fog lights and some light adjustments right here for the dash. Now, you're always gonna wanna travel with your lights on even during the day to make yourself more visible but you're also going to always remember to turn your lights on, off, I'm sorry, off if you do have a memo on. Uh, right here we have some the windshield wipers as well as the blinkers and some windshield wiper fluid to push the button right here. To put your vehicle in park or drive, there is no stick shift. It's actually on the right side of the steering wheel. Push in the brake and you can see if you push this button right here, that is park. To put it in drive, you simply push it down and you'll notice on the dash it said now it says drive. To put it in reverse, you're gonna actually follow the arrows up and that's in reverse. And then we're gonna push it back into park. We're gonna push the button right there and now it's in park. To adjust, your uh, settings on your dashboard. You can use the home button right here, as well as this guy right here. This is actually a little sensor right here. We can just go back, change the range, your trip. You kind of move that guy right there, just slightly tap it, and it gives you some options up there on the dashboard. All right, let's talk about uh, the radio right here, as well as the AC controls. Here is your furnace control as well as your AC with the AC button right here. You got some um, defrosters right there, as well as your uh, vents for your feet. You got some hazard lights right here, defroster right there, and then another button right there, and then this is your fan control right here, of how you want the fan. Radio, okay, let's talk about the radio. Hit that home button right there, and that's gonna give you all your sources. Radio, Sirius XM radio, if it is uh, available. Uh, Android Auto, CarPlay, USB, camera. Let's talk about the camera. Every time you put this vehicle into reverse, camera mode will go on. If you want to have the camera on while you're driving, you can do so by simply going to the home button, pressing camera, and now you can drive, and that's your new rear view mirror because you don't have a rear view mirror up here, that is your new rear view mirror. To go back, you simply tap the screen, go back to home, and it gives you more options. Bluetooth phone, let's talk about Bluetooth phone. All right, not all phones are compatible. If it asks you for a code, try four zeros, or if it just says connect uh, right here, you can connect that. It's just like every other uh, home radio uh, in your vehicle, and then close, of course, Bluetooth audio also right there, and other buttons right here. You're gonna notice when I turn the vehicle off, the radio will stay on. 
To get that radio to go off, you can either press the power button or you can simply open the driver door and the radio will go off. All right, everybody, thank you for watching our instructional video on the MB24 Thor Quantum. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I'm Dave with Family RV. Make sure you check out our website at www.familyrv.com. We do sales, rentals, auto body, and service as well. We are located in Morgan Hill at 19380 Monterey Road. Check us out or give us a call at 408-612-4700. Till next time, take care.